Good evening. And Welcome to Mum, McLoon and Maui. Today's seminar number 15. It is uh, June the 6th. Kia ora all. And let's get going. Didn't and you see that in the Scott Pilgrim? That, you know, there was the, uh, there, you, the mystery body was laced with the mystery body. As well as... That's what we didn't talk about yet. But it begins saying once a time ago in a mystery land called Toronto, Ontario. What, Canada, whatever... The designation is Toronto, Ontario, Canada. They call it Mystery Land. That's the mis- That's where it's definitely pointing to Dobstown, though that is not what is the figure. The figure is the chip body life. And I was thinking that that is not really about teenagers. It's the way everybody is right now as you move in the Mystery Landscape. Nobody knows what to say on when they go on a date. That's a good point. Yes, why do they say Mystery Land and, um, in, in, in the beginning of the movie? And it's showing uh, the... Uh, the drama on the chip body scale, which is the identity builder for these kids, and it's a very flexible, fluid, multi-leveled identity, uh, but there's a larger in- uncertainty, which is the sex bob arms. Yeah. Sex bob arms. We could call it... There was no uh, tremendous angst. That's right. They don't even have angst anymore. <laughs> it's a drifting, and McLuhan said that. If we keep this up, we're just going to end up being floating drifters. There's a driftingness, uh, so it's archetypal to connect to one person. Now note, note what McLuhan says in the love dialogue that you know, love as an art form comes in with the uh, uh, middle, uh, the um, troubadours and that period of chivalry. So now it's a different kind of love as art form. I wouldn't even call it love. I would say you want to you want to find out if you exist, so you have to connect with one other person to see if you have any existence. That's yeah. what was going on with there those was kids. Another, that was folks, another thing. He wasn't sure if she was a dream or if she was real. That's right. He finally, yeah. he finally kind of touches her and he runs to his buddy and goes, No, she's really there. <laughs> See? Now that was, if McLuhan says it, TV is fantasy, and you know the chip body is interactive fantasy, then the kids growing up today, just like they, they didn't know whether 911 really happened, uh, that is the fact. They have nothing, nothing to compare to. So that movie was uh, was all about attempting to make a, uh, a synaptic connection with something, and you weren't even sure what it was when you did, and you weren't sure what, how it would turn out. But he did have a sense of certainty or knowing, and that was that when he, he saw her in the dream, and then he saw her in real space, but he wasn't, he, now he was confused, he wasn't sure which was more real than the other, but yeah. he was certain that she was someone that he needed to connect to. He had a place of certainty uh, or knowing within himself. Right, and, and you in the movie fails to explore that, and then the the mystery part of himself, how, how he knew that. Now uh, she said that there was a subspace uh, bypass that went through his apartment or went through his brain or something. Like that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, he because he, he said, "Isn't that weird that I was just having a dream about you?" And she, she had to figure out. Well, no, that's not weird. <laughs> And he, he looks at her, he goes, it's not? <laughs> she goes, yeah. yeah, and then she comes up with that expl- hyperdimension explanation. <laughs> Actually, the more you think about it, the wonder it was sex Bob Alms. It really was Dobstown stuff because, um, uh, what was I going to say? You say that he didn't know, oh yeah, the synchronicity factor. It's like being on five bodies. They, they, uh, synchronicity was very prominent because of the imploded nature of the membrane they live in. Yeah.